beat the Chad. I, I didn't hear, I, I didn't see Chad operating in the corporate room. Chad ain't no motherfucking joke. I got acquainted with this young man. Now he's a mogul. Mm -hmm. He's been a mogul the whole time. He, he started out working with Carlos at a kiosk in the mall. Come on. And him and Clayton and Carlos all work together. This is oh, a legendary yo, story. Oh, you the third part of the kiosk. Yes. Triangle in the kiosk. In the biopic. I've always we're, heard three niggas in the kiosk. The <laughs> they are casting one. a light-skinned young young Chad yeah. right now. You got to have baby heads. We got it's the nigga the, from, It's <laughs> the nigga from the Central Part 5, the one good nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's who's going to play him. I forgot his name. He What's the Puerto man. Rican nigga name? <laughs> oh, we got Robert. Chad Ubre from the 85 South yeah. Show on the culture program. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Yeah, yeah. it's all good. Yes, you sir. Right. Yeah. I was saying Umbro right for four enough. years. Umbro. Umbro. So, you, are you, you from Atlanta? No, I'm from New Orleans. Well, gotcha. Yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. So, you say you moved to Atlanta um, when yeah. high school? No, nah, yeah, I Atlanta. moved. Well, I wouldn't even call it Atlanta. It was North Georgia, way out there. Okay. Land country. Right. Oh, well, man. Sheesh, Mount, probably. Like yeah. Kennesaw? Yeah, Kennesaw. Okay. Before oh, before dang. it became Kennesaw State, when it was really like Kennesaw. Kennesaw. Yeah. When it was like still Kennesaw. like, bring your goddamn noose. Hard, hard Kennesaw. Kennesaw. Yeah. Rock. Kennesaw with a K for those. Can I just say congratulations on 85 South hosting the BET oh, one, more time. Yeah. Oh, one more time. Me, me, me. That is a uh, nigga. Shit. I cried in real life. I had it. I was like, nigga, nah. I didn't know niggas could do this much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, seriously, we come from it's not avalanche. asking for what you're supposed to ask for mm -hmm. right. and seeing brothers in power empowers us. Yeah. And then, then you, you guys hired Tyler. Shout out, give it up for Tyler. Got, he got his writing. Yeah. Been writing all week on other TV shows and stuff. And just to see y'all on, on the screen. When I say y'all, I'm I say all you right, guys because right. it's like my, my, my brothers man it's, it's like having a rich ass younger brother <laughs> to put on king <laughs> i'm talking about y'all all y'all put me on y'all got me the writing job with drake in the uh, future right life yeah, is good yeah, so yeah, i appreciate joe. that joe, joe, joe shout out to joe shout out to his brother cisco man yeah, the Cisco's newman brothers man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but Cisco's anyway man. could you talk about like how how you guys got to that point because i remember in the beginning what made you say right. this is the space this is what we're doing podcasting is going to be it Right, and you are currently was on Wild and Out. What Carlos was on Wild and Out? Yeah, they were. So, you know, while they was doing their thing, Joe and I and Cat, we used to work for Steve Harvey. And then prior to that, I worked at a um, it's a marketing agency out here in Atlanta. So, you get to learn the different spaces and places how this whole thing comes together. But the game that I tell people all the time that we learn from Steve, man, it's it's more about platform than it is about personality. Mm. So Steve had a you know, he had a radio show that touched some 7 million people a week. A week, bro. So God, in my no. brain, there's not going to be another Steve Harvey because that medium is becoming, you know, decentralized. Right. Ain't no mustache can meet up. Yeah, <laughs> and there's no more, like, <laughs> you know, there's no more <laughs> gatekeeping, essentially. Right. So right. initially, Los's show was supposed to be a radio show. And mm. then nobody, we knocked on everybody's door locally, and nobody would really take a call. And then um, Los was like, let's do internet radio. And we didn't even know what that was. And then one day he was like, we should do a podcast. And none of us knew what a podcast was. But we understood the power of platform. Right. right. So I think all I knew at the time was, um, I think Charlemagne had one. Mm -hmm. I think Joe Budden probably had one. And then um, Tax was the one that I Tax had. Tax yeah. yeah. But there was nothing here. So Los reached out to Fly. We had reached out to Fly, too. If Actually, what's funny is the BT Awards five years ago, the first time we connected with Fly was, we had some passes for Steve to do like interviews for content for his website. Mm -hmm. And we had Fly basically go up and down the green carpet to do those interviews and five years later, now he's the one that's hosting. But wow. that's we couldn't insane. even get any awards so five years ago. That's Hell crazy. Yeah. That's how crazy. And I think that video's on YouTube somewhere. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, so, so to answer your question, we just understood a platform, bro. And then what you can build on that and galvanize a whole audience. So you tell like, Steve Harvey's a number one author. He's a number one, he's got movies that are number one, Family Feud's number one, all because he continues to talk to this audience and go buy this book, right. go watch this movie, come to this show, buy these tickets. Right. And it just, it clicked for us. It was pretty simple in my mind. It wasn't like deep. We just understood what that platform was, that's all. So it was like, it was like, damn, we, we know what, we don't know what we want to do. We just know we need to do something with what we got right now. Yeah, yo, so, so to keep it all the way real, we actually pitched, a tour. It was like Chico, I think Emmanuel Hudson, Clayton, Los, and I'm like, you know, Steve. These are our partners. These mm -hmm. ain't 
somebody I got to go send a booking email to. These right. are like people I came up with. Right. Because me and Joe was doing our thing on the production side, creating content or whatever. Well, Joe would direct, I produce, whatever. What year was this? Because this you guys were super early on this this wave. Though. Oh, man, this is like 14. So let me back up even more. Even working for Steve, we ran all of his digital and content. So it's oh, not shit. like we was just getting right. coffee. I mean, we were doing that too, but <laughs> right. we, was, we was running his YouTube Running his Facebook, Instagram, all the shit he don't know cat. about. So y'all basically yeah. went to Production okay. University under Steve Harvey. Yeah, he threw us in like the hundred foot water, and we just kept swimming back. Mm, you know. Yeah. So it goes from you know just some guys holding the cameras to like television department. You got to talk to Chad and Joe before anything goes out now. Wow. Um, all the way down to his Super Bowl commercial, like we was kind of calling some shots on that stuff. You know. So shout out to you Steve take, Harvey. Yeah, and he That's just huge. threw us in the deep end. So. So I try to tell people like, man, like when it comes to the digital stuff, we had to do it at the highest level for him. So to do it, we just basically got to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Do it for ourselves. And you got these, you know, it's three versions of Steve Harvey now. And I say, but like some premium content, I mean premium talented people mm -hmm. and just build around that, bro. You know, so it wasn't like, it wasn't nothing we ain't done before. Right. You know, so you take what you learn from, a, even when I used to work at a marketing agency before Steve, like by the time I left there, I was, you know, running accounts and managing budgets. and You know, you have access to all this stuff. You really have no business having access to at 24 <laughs> years old, 25 right. years old, 26 years old. But to be smart enough to be fucking soaking it in, because some people like, gotta go to work today. Oh, yeah, you know bro, what I mean? I couldn't wait to work. I loved, I loved Come it. On, man. But I was also the dude in college, like when I quit ball, I was throwing parties. I was trying to figure it out. Hell yeah. Because in my going. mind, yeah, like you can ask my partner. I went to school at Jackson University. All my part, like Joe was coming to my parties. They'll tell you we was from house parties to parties with the Kappas to you know fifteen hundred whatever in the yeah. venue. They don't know who running it. Oh, you were silent. Yeah, Ooh, I wasn't drinking. Hard. I wasn't smoking. You know, cause I knew like you didn't want to. You know, this people's been doing this for some fifteen twenty years. I ain't trying to get on nobody's nerves. Get up on. I ain't trying to have no spotlight. So like. I just be chilling, man. Nobody knew whose party it was. I went. That's when I first registered my own company. So like, it's been a trajectory. <laughs> what was your Hold first on. company? The first company was uh, uh, Five Star Entertainment. Let yeah. me ask you a question. Sounds professional. Are you Al B. Sure, son? No. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. <laughs> what? Did you look like Al B. Sure? Oh, nah. <laughs> I thought you Bruh, heard something. The way he said no nah, was like he expected <laughs> him to ask that shit. He <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I get, get it all the time. time. No nah. one is. Nah. <laughs> yeah, the way that, that whole haircut. exchange made me feel yeah. like y'all talked about something it's before nah. this. Nah. 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 He's been in the game so long. No, nah, like, bro, uncle. you know. No, he didn't say that. That's my uncle. I don't believe he related. How did you meet Carlos, bro? Man, like. I tell a story and nobody believes me, bro. Like I, I'm always like I didn't want to. I never wanted to ask my folks for no money. Mm -hmm. So it's the summer before school. I, I mean, they got it, kind of Chad. Bro, I was. Like, I'll be face, sure. His face looked like they got it. I'll be sure. I'm sure nah, they got I just, it. I just, I'm <laughs> sure they got sure it. I'll some be sure they nah, got it. Nah, it's not even <laughs> that. It's just. <laughs> bro, I just, I just believe. Like I was cutting grass, doing whatever I could to get a little check, buy some Jordans, whatever. Right. 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 So gotta get the J's. Yeah, so like the summer before going to school, I wanted to get a job. And it wasn't because I necessarily wanted this job, it's the girl I was with. Yeah. And she had it. So I'm like, well, I'm go like plug me in. You know yeah. what So black we go to man. Yeah, so this is when people were still selling movies. I'm gonna say movies, selling phones in the middle of the mall. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like um AT and T, but whatever the third party right. version of that was. So I remember we had this training down in Decatur, and Los is there. And he had hair, he got the, you know, just the chin. And like, bro, this dude was the like the funniest person I ever met in my entire life. And he sure. wasn't trying. He's just mm -hmm. taking over the room like he always does. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm thinking I'm never going to meet him again. And I'm like, bro, where, where they got you stationed at? Kennesaw, whatever, the Town Center Mall. And I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, I'm going to Town Center Mall. So day one, oh, that's homie from training. Orientation. Yeah, so. Is this going in the movie? God damn it. I don't know. But I, I think they right And then now. like, you know, so I tell people like that same loss you see in front of 5,000, 10,000 people is same. the exact same loss in front of five people. Fact. So this dude is stopping the hood dudes, the old white women, the grandmas, they all dying. He's selling. I sold nothing. He sold everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. He's pushing the whole kid. Hood niggas at town center. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to go to the mall. Because, no, the, the, me, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you yeah. why. Because they'll go there because everything at Greenbrier be sold out. Everything mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Nobody buying 
Now, I'm Jordan sitting on the rack. Ain't no line. Yeah. Yeah. Town Center. Used to be. You so go to that boy, bitch at 2 o'clock. different now. But <laughs> yeah. They driving up to Town Center because yeah. they know it's going to be available. That's really what it was. I ain't never you know. Or oh, if your service wasn't bad, credit was bad, you come there and get your little cell phone. That's what that was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, man, like, that's, that's, and then Clayton was there too. So, it's so low orientation too? Nah, I didn't see him. He I just, was about I just to see him the next day. So yeah. it's like Clayton. What's funny is Los used to wear like the wooden uh, B joints. Yeah. So I would call him Mecca. I'm like, bro, you like your name is Mecca. <laughs> so you the first roast? He had a little soul. He had a little soul. Uh, he'll right tell there. you. He'll tell you that, bro. So uh, Mecca. Yeah, and, and, and it's cool, man, because Los like he from Mississippi. I'm from Louisiana, so there was always a connection there. But even when I went to school, Los checked up on me more than I checked up on him. You know right. what I'm saying? Just, hey, bro. Hey, little bro. I'm just calling. Make sure you're straight. Making sure this good, miss. And then just one random day, he's like, "Bro, I think I'm gonna do comedy." I'm like, "Bro, you been doing comedy?" He's like, "No, nah. I'm like, I'm gonna do it for real." Damn. Well, I don't know how to support. I ain't got no money, but I, I believe it. Right. You know, I support you. Yeah. Cool. So every time I come home, we have a little show. You know, whatever little chick I was dating, make sure we got in free. You know, all those little things. But <laughs> that's how we met, man. And it's it's been a one ever since. So so how'd y'all get back to? I mean, so. You know, you still in school, he's doing comedy, right. doing this thing. I know you probably might have seen him on TV or something like that. But yeah. how'd you get back to, like, back to kicking it again? Yeah, I mean, it was, I'm telling you, bro, like, when I would come home, he'd be like, bro, what you doing? Because you oh, know how he, he don't just kick with yeah. anybody. Mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, we had a relationship. And uh, we would go to whatever little club you can get into that I can get into for under 21, you know, come kick it here. I came back one summer. He got me another job working at some sporting goods store. So we were selling like shoes together. Well, I wasn't selling, but he was selling like, shoes. <laughs> you wasn't selling shit, yo. Yeah, now I you was. selling all hey, everything. Look, well, how come it's still the same thing, though? The same thing. He like, well, shit, he ain't selling. I'm selling. <laughs> right. Like, Chad's going to run the shit and Lowe's going to sell the shit. Right. Man. Oh, you got but, that's uh, dope, dope, man. Yeah, so I mean, like, even, like, you know, and I, every time I come home, he just makes sure, you know, what's up, man? Come pull up on me. We mm-hmm. just go kick it or whatever. So it wasn't hard. It wasn't like a. Los was a friend. That's what I tell people. It was friendship way before it was ever business. Or that's what make it so real. It, you know yeah. what I mean? Like so I didn't I, even look at Los. It was just like this. My partner. That's the funniest person I ever met. Mm-hmm. In the, in the right. Did you ever pull up with him and Zoo used to live together? Because I heard it was like legendary nights. Nah, that, that's when I was in school. When I came back, Los was. I don't know if it was a Marietta spot or the spot before that. I can't remember. I think because yeah. I know he was on the south side at one point, but. Nah, because I was in school, like, yeah, and then I before. stayed down there for a little bit, too. But we was always in touch, so it was come home for the summer, come home for Christmas break, whatever. Man. Yeah. And y'all was like, all right, so we, we need to, to to flesh this thing out. We need to get D.C. Yeah, so D.C. was actually uh, Joe uh, Joe's idea on our, on the production side. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, Lawson Fly was building that relationship on Wild Announced, though. Mm-hmm. And what's crazy is there's some video way out there where there's like, man, who's your top five favorite com- comedians in I was like, bro, it's a dude named Carlos Miller. Like, he speak for us. You know, right. so they was already we was already speaking this stuff into existence. And then mm-hmm. and then um Joe was running Steve's Twitter account and just reached out to him on some like, I see you, young man, you know, and then starts DMing. Him. <laughs> I see you, young yeah, man. Yeah, like, you know, just Carter start the conversation. That nigga tweets yeah. got a mustache. Oh, Hell no. <laughs> so then so then you remember Fly was doing Ratchet People Meet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We pulled up on that, and I'm like, bro, this is genius. It's like, genius. this yes. is like, he had you know, if you step the production value up, you know, because Nav and all them boys was doing that. They had the whole, man. yeah, Duchess. Um, so we were just we was on some like, bro, we trying to do a podcast. Well, what's a podcast? We don't really know what it is either. But this is what Steve did. We just trying to do that version of that mm-hmm. for us. If you got, you know, it ain't no money, mm-hmm. but if you want to at least just build something, he was like, man, let's do it, and it was. And then we go pick fly. I remember we picked fly up from uh, Atlantic Station. Joe used mm-hmm. to drive a Mustang. We picked him up. He rolled with us. That's when we did the BET thing, and it's been running Crazy. ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all had like a, a lot of different rotations. Like it was like I remember Darren was on there a lot. Mm-hmm. Darren was on there. Yeah, uh, Clayton. Clayton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that, so, um, damn, we getting the whole history of '85. So <laughs> you got those two, and then right. Chico and Clayton. Yeah. Clayton or Clayton in person, Chico. Tell me, how did it go? Yeah, so it it, it started with Los and, and Fly, mm-hmm. and then um, Clayton started off as like a guest, but he just created this dynamic that like made Los and Fly better, and it was like this perfect third punch, mm-hmm. you know. So we just started running with it to the point that we was doing live shows. But in the same sense, you know, Chico is really just a proximity thing. You know, he doesn't live in Atlanta, mm-hmm. so I remember the first time he did a joint with us in LA and it did so well. Mm-hmm. 
he's like, bro, if you, it got to the point where he would come down and we just record as much as we can. So it really wasn't like he was here, but we was putting out so much content consistently with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it became. And then obviously, like, the, the, the show started, you know, taking on that musical element. And it just made, and then, you know, Clayton moved to LA yeah. to do what he, handle his business, which was, we support that, no problem. And then Chico fell right in consistently and just made sense. We just been running. Mm. Yeah. So, so. Wasn't like no executive decision. It was like. No, no, everything y'all, yeah. everything y'all do looks okay. It don't yeah. look like. Yeah. No, y'all look like y'all genuinely want to be around each other. So. Yeah. I, I tell that to people all the time. That's what I think was hard for Hollywood to understand. Like there was no plan as far as I don't know you, I don't know you, but let's put this together. It's like, man, that's my partner. I want to see him win. So like me and Joe tell anybody that work with us or in the capacity, like you're here to serve these guys, to make put them in the best light possible. Facts. And we're going to win off of all that. That's facts. really what that is. Yeah. Facts, facts. So like the uh, when Los was doing shows at Cat's Cafe, right? was I'll that like, like, was that, the first 85 South live version, or was that before 85 South? That was before. So, oh, shit. so Los used to do cats. So you know when you, I know, I used to be in yeah, yeah. So it was easy for me. I'm like, man, bring a chick through here. This is gonna be cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, easy. So <laughs> when it was easy time day. to figure some stuff out, uh, what's funny is me and Joe used to. If you ever been around us, we argue a lot. Mm -hmm. And just over the dumbest stuff, bro. Mm -hmm. So we at working at Steve one day, arguing. People were like, man, y'all two are funny. Y'all should do y'all's own radio show. And I'm like, no, but I know somebody that can. Boom. The funniest person I ever met in my entire life. And Joe was like, man, who? I said, bro, me, Carlos Miller. <laughs> Came there the next day, Joe bought a camera. And like, he's like, bro, I'm here every Tuesday. There's days Joe would be there on Tuesday just shooting. We still got old stuff from six, seven years ago that we had put out that Joe just shot with us. It's just that version of Los is like. That needs to be in the yeah, vault. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, straight up. That needs to be vinyl albums. That cat, so that cat, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. That dude was in his own, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of the ones that I, cause I would be on the road, so cause you know you can get detached when you're on the road, right? Heavy, like right. especially doing colleges, I would have to come see, cause Sco Bubba, rest in peace, told rest me to come. He peace. told me about college. He was like, "It's this yeah. nigga up here, bro. Yeah. I'm fucking with him. Yeah, come, come see what's going on, bro. Come yeah. get around these these young niggas. Got this energy. Come on, like it was yeah. that type of conversation. So I was like, oh, these niggas cool. Like you know what I mean. So yeah. it wasn't no forced or nothing. It was just nah. That's not even who he is, bro. Yeah. He want to see everybody win. Mm -hmm. It's so yeah. crazy, bro. Like uh, my first interaction with Los was on Hell Date, and I forgot about that. It was yeah. like. I mean, they were all, they would sit us all down. It's like, you're going to be the first one that the date is supposed to pick. So make sure you're, you get kind of in favor with the person that you're dating. Right. And then they would say, all right, you're number two and you're number three. And so we would know that, all right, so I'm about to get real crazy. So she'd be like, I don't like him. You know what I'm saying? Los would be like number two and number three, but end up being number one just because right. the girl just be like, right. man, they make a funny as fuck. Like, <laughs> I don't know my pussy way. For some reason. That's right. That's right. way. Like, bro, you supposed to be number three. I'm like, hey, bro, she she got down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, that's him in the middle of the mall, bro. That's him at the training. You know, that shit was amazing. I'm and I'm just like, you know. And I'm coming from acting, like mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing comedy, but I ain't doing comedy like that. Like I'm acting, I'm like I'm looking at these niggas, like him and Clayton. I'm like, bro, X Men, yeah, like yeah. these niggas are savants, yeah, yeah. You so know what I mean? Imagine that, like trying to sell some cell phones, <laughs> for real. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a comedy show every day, bro. <laughs> Goddamn, what's up, old lady? Shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you? Uh, I know you got to go in a minute, man. No, so, but I want I want you to speak to. Uh, you know, obviously the importance of being independent and then some of the, I guess, the games that try to get ran on you um, mm -hmm. by Boy. major corporations or other people that see what yeah. you got. But, uh, you know, they're going to try to it. take it. Give us the tea, Chad. Speak nah, on it. Folks that's watching. <laughs> nah, sure. like, in, independence was a thing for me because um, it's it's weird, bro. It's weird to be able to see, you know, not just a Steve. I don't want to keep pointing him, but, you know, he opens up the door where you meet a lot of people. Yes, yeah, sir. And but what you learn, and I say this with all the respect in the world, bro. A lot of these guys are just really well-paid employees. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fact. So there's like mm -hmm. there's a peace of mind that comes with independence. You know, there's a level of integrity that comes with independence. You don't have to expect certain things from people when it comes to independence. And just to be able to, like, I was the kid that grew up that was like, man, I want to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. You know, so like independence ain't really hard. It's more so, do you want to put that extra effort into education? extra effort into math or extra effort into 
um, like the runway that it takes to be able to be independent, you know. You got to want to do that shit. Yeah, like nuggets. Have, yes. it's not something you like. Yeah. You don't choose this I, shit. Listen, I have my MBA, and I still learn something new about business yeah. every time I talk to Chad. Yeah. Man, every Chad, single time. Yeah. I just want to thank you, man, because you call and give me. You 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 put so much life <laughs> on the phone. Yeah, so you look. Like, Ronnie Jordan, I got you. Don't don't bro, trip. <laughs> like, when I call people, bro, it ain't like, it ain't even like no rah-rah. It's like, bro, you don't need me to validate you. It's like confirmation, dog. Facts. Because I've I've done I've been at the marketing agency where you're doing the the budgets and mm -hmm. we're gonna pitch these boring ideas. Let's go find this talent. Insert right. talent here. And what you learn is, bro, like we're the source of this stuff. That's it. So they take it from us and then sell it back to us. Mm -hmm. You know, and that never sat well with me. But it doesn't matter when you're just a marketing assistant, right. just getting yeah. coffee, or you're just a cameraman, or he's the guy that runs my Twitter. Right, you know, right. so this stuff is being in me and telling you know, telling people how I believe it should go. But I wasn't necessarily validated by what they believe is For sure. right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? I've always, I've always, Dame Dash always made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Me too. He you made know? sense to me too. And it's like I figure, I think you, you figured out how to put the the sugar in the medicine. Sometimes you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you just gotta right, figure right, out how, yeah. to, how that works and how that works for you. Yeah. And uh, but though, I, I believe all of us should be independent because it, independence independence forces people to do good business by you, even if they don't want to. Right. Mm. You know, break they, it down. You don't have to be. It doesn't matter if these people have integrity. I can say no, and people treat you differently when you can say no. Big facts. Most people know that you're gonna say yes, and if you don't, somebody else will. Right. You know, a girl would treat you different if she know, like, man. Eh. Anybody check real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Facts. But, so, if, but if you a shining motherfucker, yeah. she can be like, I mean, like, whatever you want. Right. Like, she laughing yeah. at all your bullshit yeah, jokes. Yeah. Like, independence is a real badge of honor for me. Mm. Because, like, like, my heroes ain't no hot. My heroes is my grandfather. This dude was a sharecropper. Mm. He made his bread, took care of his kids, and then he bought that very land <laughs> that the dude was trying to play him on. Mm. So I'm like... You come from that, my yeah, boy. You know, came from, you came mm. from fuck you mean. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And then like even like I hear Did stories he about too? my father. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we I hear, that type of shit, I be on. Yeah, bro. But I, I mean, like, bro, you uh, like own the sugar cane now, Because he should yeah. have. You know what I mean? He should have bought it. He should have bought his land like, and then man, killed my, him my and took his money. My father passed like two years ago, bro. No debt. Oh, that's amazing. House paid for. Funeral was already paid for. Yes, sir. I own that land. I own that land. The brothers are straight. You know, and even like my father, I seen him grow up, and he he worked one job all his life. But I remember him hustling and hiring, right. so trying to figure this out. He tried to start internet companies all the way to like Damn. cleanup companies, bro. He started, you know. So that's in turning a dollar into two dollars has always been in me, dog. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not. I just happen to be in this space. I, if I was, if I had a car wash, it'd be the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I had a farm, it'd be the same thing. If I had all a grocery right. store, like I don't understand. Capitalism creates all these middlemen. So mm -hmm. many middlemen. You know? And all these middlemen feel like they're super important. Right. Yes. But when, before we do any business, I just try to ask, like, purpose. Like, why are we doing this? And right. then, mm -hmm. I feel like intentionality will get you further than hard work will. You know? So that's what it is about that independence. And I get to hire the people I want. You don't have to have a resume to work for me, bro. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? You know? That stuff yeah. means something to that's me. That's powerful. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's black power. And like and like y'all merch game is right. second and y'all need to write a merch for dummies. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like for people who are getting started though, like you know, I mean, because even though you do have a Carlos Miller, right, Chico Bean and a DC Young Fly who yeah. in their right respects yeah. have the oh, world. Oh, they have three you know unicorns for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, I don't, you know what that's what people Brandon. skip over, like we can yeah. just start a podcast. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. But, yeah. but you, you can, can you can, three unicorns. but like <laughs> you can. The, the way y'all, I mean, not, I mean, the way, just the way y'all going about it, you seeing it, it's coming out looking clean. Yeah. It, it ain't no bullshit. Like, the customer service seems to be crazy. Like, if you go to 85 South Show live, nigga, it's a line to get in. Right. There's a line at the bar, and yeah. there's a line at the merch table. Know that. Yeah. How the fuck y'all got three lines popping? <laughs> Bro, it's, 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 it's intentional. Again, like, you know, y'all giving can't, away shit. I can't. <laughs> sometimes, I mean, I, I can't tell no jokes, bro. But I know, like, bit like stoners. I feel East like I, stoners. Thank you, sir. All right, East East. all right, boy. Uh, like I don't tell no jokes, dog. But I feel like it's a gift for me when it comes to like business. Mm. 
Mm. So the way we created was 85 South Media is like the it's the, the foundation, the right? Umbrella. But it's the company that produces the podcast. Come but it's now. also the company that owns its own apparel line. Fuck you, man. It's a company that has just launched 85. Mm -hmm. And it's we want to get into real estate, all kinds of things we want to do. Mm -hmm. So when you're creating... Like you have to create the business of the 85 South show first. Okay, mm -hmm. let's make let's make sure this can make money five, six, seven different ways. All right. Cool. Take a little bit of this money and we'll now invest it into 85 Apparel Company. Mm -hmm. But you got to have money to really get into development, to do it the right way, to right learn, way. taste, right. to go out to LA, to go to New York, to go to Chicago. But now 85 Apparel is its own line of business that can stand independent. If Fly don't want to get on the road tomorrow, Losa want to get on the road tomorrow, this business still has the analytics department, it's got the digital department, it's got the fulfillment department, creative department, all those sort of things where I shouldn't have to have my hands on it 24-7. Come on, bro. So that's how that's how we look at it. Like, this should, let's build this business up, let it run itself, put somebody in position, and we'll go right. build another business. All up under this umbrella. There you go, yeah, man. We're going to have to sell this episode. Bro, for so real, this is a master class. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to hit the, the Patreon. Nah, but real nah, shit. but it's, it's real like, shit. Real shit. Thing, though, Patreon. It's like, Me and Rose was coming. talking about what, <laughs> what we Patreon. need behind We're going to do paywall. business shit on our Patreon. Said, Fuck man. it. But nah, it's, it's really, it's, it's simple, bro. And I'm not saying it like I'm smart than anybody. It's... You are. Who wants to put that? You, <laughs> yeah, you're smart. And your Al B. Shure's family, bro. <laughs> Stop, bro. bro. That's I don't cool. think Al from. Looking at you, you don't have to. He said, "I keep looking at I you." I think Al from New York. Fuck? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they got family. In, everybody got family in the south, bro. Everybody yeah. got family. You got a point. Remo, stop gazing at Chad. I'm not gazing, bro. I'm not he gazing, just told, bro. told an impassionate story about the lineage of his father and grandfather, right. bro. And he's going to come back with the yeah. I'll be sure shit. Yes. Right. This nigga, granddaddy was Django. Nigga, did you not hear the shit? I'll be sure he ain't bought no property yeah. back from I'll be sure don't know he got it. I'll be sure don't know he got property in New, not, New Orleans. No share crop is in. Yeah, man. But thank you. Y'all have turned into like late night for black people, though. For real. It's like it's yeah. no, I'm not even capping. I just I know y'all, but I'm just saying it's like niggas don't watch Fallon no more. Right. Nah, if you real, do, I be watching them like I don't know. But them, people like, come in with they dope. press rollouts yeah. with y'all. Like they come yeah. in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's. I mean, y'all have Busta Rhymes, that. nigga. Like yeah, intentionality, bro. Busta yeah, Rhymes. intentionality. That's yeah. the goal, bro. But dog, if you if you watch, you know, we've been doing this for five years. That's what I, I have to remind people. And it seems like a light turned on like two years ago for the rest of the world. Like we knew what this was. That's why we focused on like us. Cause there was a time we was chasing guests and all that, but we never wanted to get in a position where guests may not show up or whatever. You know how that can be. So let's just continue to grow us. If, it, if, this, if the guests come, that's cool. Right. We appreciate it. So when they do come, we've already sharpened those skills from production, post-production, lighting, set, all the way down to their interview skills. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you do the press run and every interview is the same. But when you come on our show, it's going to be Chico going to give you the whole verse. Who else going to do that? Nobody in the world. You know? Yes. Y'all right. had right. Iman right. give DC better weed. It was awesome. <laughs> it was the <laughs> most dope shit I ever seen in my life. This nigga say, what you want? Allegedly, it's allegedly. It's some, allegedly. 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 Like, he gave him CBD. Shit. He gave him great CBD. Shit happens on and there, it's man. just like, and I, and then, and I see y'all doing the shit organically and it's amazing. Right. And, but you always share the information. That's what yeah. we've been on anyway. And it's like, it's great to hear you sharing shit and you call us and like, this is what y'all need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know so, the crazy shit is? You can share as much as you want to, right? But a nigga ain't gonna do a goddamn thing until you're ready to do something. That's you know true. What I'm right. So you'll yeah. be like, "Here's all this free gold. It's over here. Just yeah. make a left." Man, I don't feel like getting up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Well, dog, you got you got to think went. like we went yeah. you know. I see a lot of people online that do the. I got this information, but it's for sale. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you should sell to us because mm -hmm. we too far behind already. That's so <laughs> fucking real. You know. So what do I look like trying to charge you for information that you can Google? Fuck you, man. You know, mm -hmm. if I can help you get there. What, what, what a lot of people that are in position don't think about, the faster you help somebody else get there, your price go up. Period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We are still, listen, we are still yeah, on this. Increase the value of the market. <laughs> I know we That's ain't supposed to sell. I, I need, so, it's like, good it can't, for it can't, it can't be. <laughs> he literally just said don't sell it, but I'm, I disagree. No, no, <laughs> 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 the market, he literally just said <laughs> I don't, don't like when people be selling stuff. No, <laughs> I've been like this shit. No, no, you see, ain't gonna find out till they've been paid already. <laughs> let me let me define that, right? So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I'm not gonna sell no course or do this. Nah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Master class. Like Master it ain't, class. 
I yeah. need you to get there faster. Because, you know, I need you to say no just like I say no. Or both of our price go up. Mm. But on, I hear that in know. your voice, though. <laughs> right. I, I need that I price I hear that you up. want niggas to be rich. Bro, in I your can't voice. tell you. I, listen, <laughs> we complain about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can get into those details, you know, how you want to get into it. I am of the personal belief that you should own markets that you dominate. Right? So, yes. like, athletes Come on, bro. should be dominated in that market. Owning. Entertainers yeah. should be dominated that market. Yeah. But it's a process. You got to go from learning how to be an entertainer. You got to be able to sell some tickets. You got to get on stage. Then you got to get to the other side. And you got to bring other people to the other side because there's power in numbers. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I'm not an executive five years ago, no matter how smart I am. Right. I'm an executive now because of what we created. Right. I didn't go through the natural Hollywood progression. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens. That's what independence does for you. Right. So if I'm, I need ten more executives though. I need ten yeah. more podcasts because I believe in building out instead of building up. Because if we build up, we are gonna pile on top of each other. Goddamn but you right. gotta create real estate. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So there needs to be, it needs to be real estate of black podcasts because really what you are are black journalists, your black television shows, mm -hmm. y'all are black cooking shows or whatever you want to create. You're, right. These are y'all are a media company. This is your first piece of content that you're producing. Mm -hmm. There's cataloging what y'all are creating. Mm -hmm. They don't want to tell you all that. They want to give you a one-time check, and they're going to hold on to all that. Mm -hmm. You know? I ain't going to lie. When you called me about uh, BT shit, I thought I was about to be number. on. No, I was, I was like, serious, bro. You like, hey, like, hey, brother, uh, I got a little opportunity. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, I don't know who this is. I ain't going to got them. Big what? I got an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I hate the sound you know what I'm like saying? Hey, young man. So but, but then he hit me again. He was like, no, nah, nigga, pick up the phone. I was like, <laughs> hello? Yeah. He like, yeah, what's up, bro? Then I heard it in the I like, Hello? Hello? That's stupid. But like, bro, you can ask anybody that's known me, dog. If I made a dollar, they made a dollar, man. I'm talking about from DJ since 21. Mm. Well, I had fifty dollars left, bro. You got it. Yeah, yeah. I need you to come back. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I ain't about to jump out the window for fifty dollars. I'll yeah. tell you the dip the, any any time I had a dip in my career or like when I was when I thought I was low and I just went on y'all show, nigga, niggas was like Bruh, and that yeah. shit instantly got me money in my pocket. So I appreciate yeah. that shit every time. But that's like, what it's supposed to be, dog. Like getting on TV. It was yeah. no TV. It was Sorry. nothing. And then the mediums are changing. So the kids at the colleges I'm performing at, they don't, they never seen comedy. They never seen Def Jam. So right. it's like they only mm -hmm. watching Wild and Out. Mm -hmm. They were only watching. That's the only shit they watching. So right. just for y'all to give niggas platforms is dope. Like y'all, y'all, the shit y'all doing, Nav Green, nigga, is amazing. Yeah. I love. Yeah. I think Nav is a genius, man. Nav I think Moneybag is a genius. I think yeah. Blake, Blake, all them, man, it's it's all them boys yeah, that they don't validate Blake that I believe great. in. Cause them Facts. stories, when you're a storyteller, bro, that stuff penetrates. Yeah. <laughs> The production is easy. That's the stuff they teach you in school. That ain't right. you can YouTube that stuff. Right. But when you got a real gift that penetrates, mm -hmm. you gotta. My job is to amplify that and mm -hmm. support that. You know. Nah, that's it, boys. It's got some real talent, man. Everybody ready to sign chat management, like. Dude. Nah, it ain't even that, man. That's the thing. I don't even believe in management, dog. I'm you said independent, nigga. Stay independent. No, I'm baby. saying these are my business partners. Yes, sir. I don't partners. tax them for ten percent. I don't mm -hmm. send them an invoice. Mm -hmm. We lose, we lose. If we win, we win. And you should win more than I do because your gift is what's special. I'm just here mm -hmm. to amplify it and put gas in that. Mm -hmm. oh, we need it. You know? Assistant. Now, you, I'm telling y'all, y'all got I it. I just got to make sure that this nigga has my number before he leaves. <laughs> Real talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Ah. You know what I mean? You're not hear me, bro. You got it. Hey, like, put your number online so look, right so, now, Chad. So, no, no, it's imagine free. This. Imagine nah. the, the 90s was special because for every Martin uh, uh, show, for every. Whatever there was a like, D.L. Hughley had a show, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was we had a show so many crazy. options of shows. Wow. That's why yeah. you had to work with all these guys. Every way. nigga had a show. In the 90s, it was I just thought about it. So I'm crazy. trying to tell you, like, the writer's strike up. fucked us over. We, but we also gave <laughs> away a lot of that power because some people get on and I'm straight. Like, I don't. That's so what happens, case, bro. I, we're supposed to give, Shit, bro. All so the cool. people that we really love and like gave. Mm -hmm. If it was giving themselves, it was service, if it was whatever, our job is to give. That's how you plant seeds. Mm. You know, stop doing laugh palooza. That's how most people was getting their looks. That yeah. stuff. Like, I saw little JJ there the first time, and he was like 10, mm. 11, killing. Yeah. yeah. And they was piping up a little white boy. <laughs> and he had an R. Kelly joke. He had R. <laughs> that shit was murdering. <laughs> My nigga, when nigga, that nigga, little JJ was on stage, niggas in the back, like, I don't know who next. <laughs> but their, their kid <laughs> is ripping. Right, little JJ. 
Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. But just to see, cause y'all put Desi and all the y'all put y'all put niggas we know in the sketches and everything. So yeah. Just you supposed to, to though, bro. Dog. That shit was hard. It's, it's so taboo when dog, niggas like, do so, it. It's so so noticed. imagine like you what y'all don't see is people suggesting who we should work with. And it'd be the Hollywood people. Who they've deemed Who they think they <laughs> say say some goofy niggas. No, nah, it's just who they deemed credible. <laughs> we got you, dog. To, like, bro, I don't even like going to LA outside of dealing with the clothing stuff. Yeah. Because you gotta they tell you you gotta do that. Maybe a producer in here. I remember we, I went to LA with Chico. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you gotta do, I forgot what the club is out there. First thing Chico does is get on stage is, uh, are there any producers in the house? Raise your hand. Any directors in the house? Raise your hand. Any casting agents in the house? Raise your hand. All right, bro, what do you do? Man, I work at so-and-so. What do you do? I work at so-and-so. So why am I here again? Whole house dying laughing, bro. <laughs> like, I don't have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, who told me I had to do this? Right. <laughs> So he's going down the line. It's yeah. like regular nine to five people here to come enjoy yourself, but they telling you it's going to be big casting mm -hmm. agent produce because this is what the system has yeah, created and told us and deemed valuable right, to right. us. This nigga saving a plane ticket money right now to go to that room. With but, I'm, yeah. but I'm saying it's more important for us to go to Mobile and to go to Memphis. Come on, yes. chilling circuit. And to go to yeah. uh, 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 Greenville. Yeah, to Charlotte. Stay with you. They love for life. Bro. I got yeah. people that have been yeah. coming to my shows literally for 15 years, for That's real, dope. every right. time. That means way more than trying to meet a casting agent. And the game has changed so much, like you're lying to me because mm -hmm. I've already built the audience. So who do I need a casting agent for? I'm gonna continue to serve this audience. I'm director to, to go to another audience that I don't even know these people. Right. right. We're trying to expand your market, man. You're yeah. thinking very narrow, but, but, okay? But this is where they, again, when you say, like not you, but when they say no, that, talk to it's me, like, buddy. bro, I, I know how to read <laughs> analytics, dog. I've done it at the <laughs> highest level. I understand analytics, I understand marketing budgets. I've caught people on marketing budgets. You caught people? Yeah, I've caught people Yo, on all hilarious. that sort of stuff. Like, on, bro, bro. What, 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 uh, you spent money on radio, where's the air check? I know how that works. Ooh, section two, bitch. I know yeah. what that looks like. He ain't put no tab on that part. There right. ain't no tab on that part. Yes, <laughs> send me the air check if you did it. I need to see the receipt for it, mm -hmm. if you did it. Where's the invoice for it? These guys are being really combative on email. <laughs> oh, man, I've had plenty of people say I'm hard to work with, but yeah. I ain't never yelled at nobody. I don't even curse. Don't. So how am I hard really to work? Really dope, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm leaning in to hear you, bro. I'm right, right. here is what yeah. I'm saying. I'm saying. <laughs> He'll say what the freak in a minute. What? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, what? Come on, man. You how am I hard to work with? Mickey, 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 Mickey. Mickey. <laughs> I ain't hard to work with. So, so what's so what's next for for the brand? Um, if you well, can divulge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what's what's next is just continuing to create our own, man. So we like. Obviously, we rolled out some merch. So what we're, what I'm trying to do is the template that we created for us, I needed to bleed into the guys. Mm -hmm. So we rolled out some merch for Los. We're going to do some stuff with Bean. We're working on some individual uh, content for all the guys. Mm -hmm. um, we want to get our own space, you know, and just build a studio Dope. to where we really don't have to go out to L.A. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And bring all that back home. So just continue to build and double down on us, dog. We want to do movies. We want to do all that. You know what that I'm saying? That real estate sounded good, too, now. Yeah, I mean... You know, it's a lot easier. You, it's a lot easier than, than they want you to believe it is. Yeah, you know, so when you get with the right yeah, people that'll share that information yeah, with you. Sir. Yeah, that's what it's about, man. Getting up in them rooms and moving up in them brackets. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. So that's how y'all got to this shit. I yeah. see you. I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Right. That's all it's you like, do. It's like I'm comedy. You, it's like comedy when you first see it. They can do comedy. You get to see them do an hour. Right. You don't. You ain't get to see that five minutes. So you be like, I can't do that shit. Right, right, right. But right. you ain't. You ain't get to see that five minutes. But then you go do five minutes. But oh, I got. got to do ten more of these five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm in there. That's how I felt about Duncan. All right, all right, man. No. Don't what know. does Chad like to do? Duncan. This all time. What are you into, Chad? What do you? Y'all niggas can't. Nobody dunk. asked Chad, but what? How his day? How was That's your day to day, Chad? It's cool, man. I'm boring, bro. I don't really do too much, bro. I play man. I mean, you're newlywed, man. How's that? It's cool. It's no different to me. Yeah. That's what I be saying. They be like, so what's the key to marriage? Nigga, not getting on her nerves. I don't know. What the yeah. Problem. And that shit was so player, let me tell you. We, you were, we were there. That oh, shit was the engagement. The engagement was. Oh, oh man. I felt like I was there. Was I nice. wasn't supposed to be here. No, nah, he was. Because, <laughs> he was, because he was just like, like yo, what's up? What's up? Oh. Oh, I'm you talking about two different things? No, they went. They went when he proposed. Uh, hey. I thought we. I thought we were talking about your <laughs> anniversary like, party. No, I, was, oh, I yeah. just thought we were hanging out, guys. <laughs> it's, like, it's very important to be quiet. Don't say anything. Nah, it wasn't like that, bro. It wasn't like that. Like, everybody welcome, bro. Yeah. How long you been married for? Well, we really got a lope, so we weren't supposed to 
She didn't want to like her grandparents don't know yet, so oh, oh. we gonna do the big we marriage. This part. Oh, we yeah. this part. It's all good. It ain't like I'm like hiding. It. Right. It's just like you your business anyway. But I just nah, it's always a married nigga. Like nobody, you got so you got a kid coming. Yeah, damn. So but you the first husband, time you don't nobody check on the husband. Yeah, but nah, I'm like, but like nobody surprised. Like I've always been like a one woman dude. In a relationship, mm -hmm. like I ain't really no wild dude. Yeah, you ain't Albie Shearer's sure cousin. <laughs> I'm focused, man. I'm focused. <laughs> you went to your baby has never hit too hard, Chad. It's bothering me most, Chief. Next man. I just got the shower. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I did. Did we keep that part? Was that on? That part? We weren't recording. Wasn't wasn't that? That? It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you? What, you got any tips for more the culture, that? the brand, to take ourselves further, and we want to be rich too? I try to t like so y'all already got the content. <laughs> you want to be rich too? He says, man, I've already got the content. Y'all, I mean, y'all already got the content. It's really just up in that production value and then the consistency, bro. Mm -hmm. A lot. I tell people, five years, bro. We had an episode. What this? Twenty six weeks, fifty two weeks in a year. Two weeks, yeah. It was an episode every fifty two times a year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes double and triple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. To the point where they would, y'all fans would be like, "Yo, I need my episode." Bro, if it now. don't, it's weird, yeah. man. I, like, I don't like people finding me online and people find me. That's very really strange <laughs> to me. Yeah. And I'm rude to you, like, bro, don't do that. Yeah, like, don't do that. They, they just said your name too many times. Yeah, stop like, doing yeah. that, bro. They like, man, tell Ash Chad. Yeah. <laughs> Come and find you. Yeah. We started to get a little bleed through Rod Rolling. Uh, yeah. Well, well, y'all gonna, gonna do it. Y'all gonna see it coming in waves. And then you can kind of, I say, cheat the system. So. Okay. But y'all aren't the tell guys. Us how to cheat. Yes. Well, I, it's not really cheating, but I mean, y'all aren't the guys <laughs> that's looking for a soundbite. But if there is a soundbite, we had one. You can leverage, you know, the power of social media because that. You remember we did the, the Star Dome, and then mm -hmm. Los kind of went on that tangent. Mm -hmm. That was the first kind of soundbite that yeah, took so off, gotta, and then that brought back a lot of people. I got, we got a hard drive full of those. Yeah, and then you know we started doing the live shows. So you see all the silly little getting the crowd in. Yeah, it makes you want to go to shareable, it. it make, you see yeah. it like, why wasn't I at this? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, that's what like, I feel like y'all are y'all y'all made a community. Y'all made everything the hood. Everything is our neighborhood. Bro, I'm telling bro, I'll yeah, be out there selling merch. Joe be out there selling merch. It just it ain't why wouldn't we these these people are my cousins. You right. Know? These Literally. are the people I grew up with. Come on, man. I'm not yes. and I, it's weird, man, like these guys in LA are afraid of us. Yeah. They're man. afraid of they our people. They should be. You shouldn't be afraid of your own people. <laughs> they should be. Because we can do their job. They're trying to run away. No, I'm saying they're afraid of the community, they're afraid yeah. of the people. Oh, hell yeah, no. Yeah, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> that's where all this, every, everything in culture starts from the community. Like, <clears> they feel yeah. like they got to, in order to get to where they went in Hollywood, they feel like they got to get away from. It's strange, bro. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy. It's strange. I'm not saying it's, I mean, there's a way to do things. I mean, if that works for you, I'm not mad at it. Right. That's I'm, been a blueprint for some people. Yeah, and, it, and you know. And niggas will tell you that in, in comedy here, too. They'll yeah. tell you, hey man, you gotta stop doing those black rooms and go get these mainstream rooms if no, you really wanna man. make some money. That's uh, what they told me. I had to, they said you gotta say, Ronnie, you're too funny, you could do white and black. Go to New York. Do the do the do the, you. the you know what's interesting, man? Systems. If you if you watch Clayton's trajectory, he can play any room. Clayton. I've seen him in any room. But he's hundred percent Clayton. Hundred percent. Both sides. The people that like, why would you want to date a girl that don't think you look good? That's weird to me. Mm. That's what I'm saying. If she not feeling you, go find somebody that's feeling you. Right. I'm about to break the yeah. Stupid as hell. You know, <laughs> that's strange, bro. Like we're chasing this validation that is validation is not real, bro. No, it's not. It's not. You know, none it of that ain't. stuff is real. It don't mean shit. Validation yeah. ain't real. Yeah. But you do gotta validate your girl. Make sure you just let her know that you love her. That oh she's yeah, pretty. yeah, yeah. I'm saying this other stuff though. I'm the talking to the people. I'm talking to the cousin. Yeah, the oh nigga yeah. said that she's pretty. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah. You definitely don't you definitely ever tell your girl. That's not like the speech before you get murdered. That's to let your girl know you cheating. Hey, come on now, baby. You know you're pretty. Come on, I'm pretty. You ain't never so said no shit like that. So you ain't on the game right now? <laughs> yeah. so what the fuck? Something's weird about it. The game ain't broke? Y'all stupid. The game ain't broke. <laughs> nah, man. Y'all got it, bro. Chad. You got to think. Like, y'all are producers. Y'all are editors. Y'all are directors. Y'all are journalists. Mm-hmm. There's more content that can roll out from what y'all have already created. The platform's there to found it. Business is easy, bro. Do you do you know how you got to learn how to hit a fastball? You got to learn how to hit a changeup. Then you got to get on first base. Mm. Once you know how to get on first base, you know how to get on second base. And then once you get on second base, your partner's job is to bring you home. Mm. That's it. RBI. Now everybody's winning. That was good, guys. That was great. So, but a lot of us, a, a, lot of us a lot of us just want to I was run. thinking it. Spiritual I thought it too. I was like, that's, that's a run bad day, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, we could have had a four-way yeah, RBI, bro. Yeah. 
I ain't no nigga still fucking with baseball, though. You know, you know the Braves. Nah, like I don't play Let me tell you something. I wish I was a baseball nigga, bro. Them niggas is getting three, four hundred yeah. million. No and they, yeah, these kids yeah. is coming from Cuba with no <laughs> shoes on. Three hundred million? Hey, that'd be funny to me when niggas just think that they would have been one of those three hundred million dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 You can you can play minor league ball and have you know make a decent. Yeah, that minor league shit yeah, is baseball. crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Look at baseball like it's easy. It ain't baseball easy. hard as fuck. To you play. If you can't get the ball, baseball is long too. Hitting a hundred miles per hour. Remember when they got in the press about Clark Morgan? I was Oregon, so dude. good at yeah. baseball. Now only can you got to hit the ball a certain way. You was great at baseball. You was playing coach pitch. No, 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 no. This ain't no pony league. Coach pitch. I play pony league, bro. I play with the pitch machine. You go from t ball. You go from t ball to coach pitch. Right. Yeah. That's when he stopped. That's what he said. crazy as hell, man. This is last level. Third base, third base, outfield. What are you talking about? I played the boys club, man. With the yeah. machine, and no, for real. With the machine, you no, was, for, for you real, was the, the machine. Reason, the reason, with the machine, <laughs> <laughs> I was up there. The reason baseball is hard, <laughs> baseball they, they start pricing us out of it. That's what it is. Mm. Fuck yeah, you yeah, that shit is expensive as fuck to play. They price us out. That's ain't why no, I'm so ain't tough. no batting cages in the neighborhood no more. I used to go to batting cages just to goddamn Get blow off steam, yeah, nigga. Sir. Mm. Ain't even you can hit yeah. the softballs out the park, nigga. Where North True Hills batting cage was lit here. They price us out of baseball. That's what they do over the batting cage. Yeah. 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 Yes. Anyway. But nah, man, y'all got it, bro. I'm telling you. I tell you all the time, man. I'm telling you all the time. Man. I appreciate and he, it. Like, bro, y'all got a team of writers. You got a team of producers. You got everything that they're going to try to tell you to hire. Mm. You got the hard part. Because you can hire more than culture to go produce some content if you want. That's you what, that, that, was the, you know that was the part of the BT <laughs> I really was excited about. The fucking credits. Yes. Because I need to see my niggas' names first. Yeah. I need to see my niggas producing, directing, all that shit. I need to see. And I'm not but again, that shit, bro. instead of us chasing that, it came to us. So we can set right. the terms, you know? Because mm -hmm. they understood, Boy, like, they know some of the names we said no to. Mm. You yeah. know? Some of them names that, you know, some people need for validation. We've said no to a lot of them names. That's mm -hmm. Power and no. You know, and even when they brought it to us, it was like, yo, we can't do nothing that our audience ain't. Right. Yeah. Like, hey man. They walk they want y'all in shiny shoots and on the stage. It's like <laughs> they, nah, they, we they, trap. They, they had some ideas, you know. <laughs> well, you not the bold. Even, even, even down to who's writing, it was like new. Even, Trying to even cone uh, y'all like, out, man. Just experience it, cause this is like like in my career, I've been I've had like tears in my career. So right. I'm at the I'm at the I had I made a decision to come off the road a little bit just to build some shit. Right. So flat out, just build some shit with these niggas. And, Writing, producing, I didn't even think about that shit right. until I got, I was like, oh, I can do this. But so, why so, do they always have, oh, this is my question. Right. Why do they always have to <laughs> give you a white production company every time? It seems like it. That's what Dame Daz has been saying for 15 years. Bro. <laughs> but on the other side, what I recognized was if I wait for them for validation, that's what's going to happen. Let's build this. Mm -hmm. So they understand 85 South Media produces this. Period. I can produce a tour. I can produce merchandise, I can produce a podcast, I can produce a radio show, I can produce An agency type show. services if you need those as well. So you got to put these things on your resume. That's why we we damn near overproduce 80 Vibes, because if they only know us for this and we roll out something new, they got to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, now they, they really know what they're doing. It's not just turning the cameras on and see these funny comedians. Mm -hmm. No, y'all bought the light. I said they paid for the light. Yeah, no, nah, bro. We, <laughs> I we, that up. we I own the lights, light. cameras, all that. Bro. Got I'm to. talking about the logo light shit. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, shit hard. That. Yeah. Yeah, bro, yeah. Cheapest thing in the room. Yeah. Right. What's <laughs> 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 it? I said, how much a light is? <laughs> yeah. But look, so look, so look. Oh, look God. Like, dig this. This is why I'm telling you, y'all got it, dog. So, as, and I'm just throwing numbers out, and I ain't in nobody's pocket. Right. Let's say you get two thousand dollars a show, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing a number out, and you do fifty days. You done made a hundred racks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the average black household income is with two family with two parents? Probably about it's like twenty-seven. 30, yeah, it's thirty-seven thousand. Like thirty-seven. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. You three times up somebody that's working their butt off nine to five. You even have the ability to think. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't even have the ability to think. Got to work. Right? Boy. So if you up 100, say you lived off of 60, I'm just throwing a number out. Mm -hmm. You can take that 40. On the business side, you can write it off, but you're investing that into new opportunities because, again, you as an individual in your foundation, you don't need to build up on your comedy career. You got that. You want to go do 100 days? Go do 100 days. That's not hard. All right. How much money do you really need? Right? So then you've already built this, this thing. The platform is really stand-up. 
Y'all's real estate is a podcast. Mm. Then your real estate is writing. Then your real estate is producing. And you're building out so that you can always come back to this stand up and go make me a hundred. But dog, I got I'm planting seeds and all these other things because eventually these things are gonna grow. Mm. And then the pandemic hit. Right. <laughs> so now I'm glad we did start yeah, something. You so know what I'm saying? That I came over here and fuck We can't with. build up. Because I was I wasn't too sure about this one. It, it was <laughs> That's understood. He, he the way you did your hands. He does a lot of, he does a lot of legs stuff, you know. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Y'all catching all the funny shit. Chad is hilarious, bro. I respect that. <laughs> he right on beat, nigga. Yeah. What you talking about? Chad always on beat. Oh man, man I'm this saying, is a good one. Yeah. I'm saying, y'all, y'all got it, bro. Don't, don't, don't like, don't get distracted mm, by what you part. think. By Ooh, what you we. think is is whatever. Because like BT was cool, but I realized like they was like, man, why you not you not happy? I'm like, it's it's not ours. So this Fuck is cool. Man. It's a base. And I'm not mad at it because, it's again, I understand what that means it's for the people that are our audience. Mm -hmm. That was their validation. I respect that. And I yeah. appreciate them appreciating that, you know. Right. So, But don't get distracted by, like, y'all have it, dog. I, I, I don't, I, the numbers may not say it, but what's going to happen is you're going to catch it in waves. You're going to be like, bro, I've been doing this for five years. The same way I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. It's no different than when Steve Harvey is, you know, 60 plus and now he's got to talk to him. He's like, bro, I've been Steve Harvey for, like, 30 years, mm -hmm. 40 years. Now y'all validated. I'm next to Ellen. It's legit. Right. You know, mm. well, we see it. We you can't be this close to this shit and not goddamn pick up something. So yeah, we know what's going on. No, y'all got and y'all got access too, man. Y'all got all the hard stuff, bro. Yeah, real. Say that one more time. Access. Not the second part you said. Oh, y'all got all the hard stuff done. Oh, I thought you said something different. My bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that time, brother? Meridian. Goddamn. Yeah, no, Meridian. Y'all got it, bro. I'm nah, man. You, this was dope. So, yeah, we like to end the show with a segment called Secret Genius Life Coach, where I give the people some words of wisdom, get through the week, get to the next episode. I am Kamal, the Secret Genius, and the words of the week are this. The blunt is always smaller in the morning, man. <laughs> you know, you put that clip out. <laughs> like, man, I'm going to smoke that shit on the toilet when I get up. <laughs> Motherfucker, it's never as big <laughs> as, when you went to <laughs> as it was <laughs> when you put it out. When you leave that blunt in the ashtray in the car and you come back to it like, yeah, I'm going to leave that for when I get up for that drive in the morning. That shit is never as big <laughs> as it was. <laughs> Just smoke that blunt at night, man. <laughs> and that's all I got. Mm. You know, I get it. I picked it up. Yeah. 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 Get the shit done, man. See it through. And it ain't, yeah. it ain't as big as when you when you first started that shit. See it through. That's like, ooh. All right, y'all. That, that, that was a good word. Yeah. No, I yeah. see it. Oh, no, I, I got it. it. Yeah, I and I was like, I be taking another blood. <laughs> <laughs> I always got another blood, nigga. Right. At all times. <laughs> Finish that blood, man, because you gonna it ain't gonna be good tomorrow. Finish that shit. Yeah, oh, okay. Today. Awesome. Bro. Got you. Thank you, Chad, for your time. Hey, bro, 85, not, Chad. We cannot man. afford <laughs> Chad. <laughs> for nah, sure. But you got it, though. But you got you. it. We got it, bro. I'm, man, I, let, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something what happened to my calendar during the pandemic. <laughs> More Than Culture is the brand. It's the podcast. Kamal the Secret Genius. Remo Rod. Tyler Chronicles. Ronnie Jordan. Special guest, Chad Oubre. We out. Yeah. We out, my nigga. Thank you so much for a new episode here. Thanks, stupid, man.